Hello again, this is Galen Pickett, Cal State University, Long Beach. This is Physics 151, and we want to continue, start, continue talking about the energy principle today. I want to talk about the update form of the energy principle 6.4 here and give you a, an application that you can hang your hat on. And some reason um, why you should be interested in using the energy principle when you've already mastered the momentum principle. Um, so the energy principle, it denotes a, an independent um, an independent property, and it will make some problems a lot easier for you to do. So we're not going to be able, or we're not going to have to do the um, momentum principle, average velocity, position, update, chain of reasoning to solve this problem. So I've got an object that I'm throwing upwards. It has a mass m that starts with a speed v0 pointing upwards, and it is at rest. I want to know how high I throw it. That's this h thing. So. Um, let's see what this looks like from the point of view of the energy principle. I think you'll see that it is simple enough that um, that we can uh, we'll, we'll get some uh, advantages here. So the director says I'm going to use the energy principle, um, the knowns. Well, I'm given the initial velocity. Let's say that that's there's the y direction is equal to v zero y hat. I also know what the final velocity is because the object is at rest at the top. It's not moving. At the top, um, let's say I also know that um, the um, that the weight is equal to minus mg y hat. The weight the, the weight is a force that I know that's a part of this problem. What are the unknowns? Well, the unknowns in this case just h. I don't know what h is. So I just have one idea though: the energy principle and one unknown. So I think I'm going to be able to get that pretty straight. Investigator says, well, let's uh, start with what the system is. So the system is the object. And then the surroundings. Uh, the only important thing in the surroundings here is the Earth. The Earth is the thing which is putting the force on the object, which is making this uh, the system change its momentum. So let's make a sketch of what happens for the initial state. So here's the initial state, v0. And let's say that y is equal to 0. That's the ground where it starts off. So there is the initial state. The final state, again, there is y is equal to 0. And here's the object at y is equal to h, but v is equal to 0. So the energy principle will say for this system, the change in the energy of the system is equal to the work that's done by the surroundings. Now I can read off from these states here what is the change in the energy. The final energy is given in this state, 1 half m times 0 squared because it's at rest, and I subtract the initial energy, 1 half m v 0 squared, and that is going to be equal to the work from the surroundings. Well, the work from the surroundings is a dot product of two vectors. I've got a displacement, like so. It takes me from the ground to the top, and I've got a force, so my displacement is 0, h, 0. That's h in the y um, uh, component. And then the force is 0 minus mg 0. That's the weight. So the investigator says my only equation that I'm generating here is from the energy principle. I get minus 1 half mv0 squared is equal to 0 h 0. That's the displacement dotted with the 0 minus mg 0. So there's one equation. Notice there's one unknown there. One equation, one unknown. That's the h. So I'm going to be able to solve this. Push this off into what the execution person says. So I have minus 1 half m v0 squared is equal to, I to do this dot product, 0 times 0 plus minus h times mg plus 0 times 0. So I get minus 1 half m v0 squared is equal to minus m g h. And notice the m's cancel off, as it always will. The negatives will cancel. So I get that h is equal to v0 squared over 2g, which is an answer we've gotten in many different varieties, many, many different guises. Let's do our skeptic check, though. So we'll check the units of h, which should be meters. Let's check the units of our expression. The units of v0 squared divided by 2g are meters squared per second squared. g is a meters 
per second squared, so second squared cancel. One of these meters cancels one of those, and I do get meters. Also, if V0 goes down, H goes down. That's also, this is the reality check. We also have H will increase if V0 increases. So those are two good behaviors, but here's a very interesting behavior. For any V0, H, um, H is finite. Think about what happens here for the energy principle. No matter how fast you shoot this thing, V0 is very, very big. Eventually, there is some spot where it stops. And if it stops, there's still a gravity force pulling it downward, so it's going to have to come back to the ground. What this means is, colloquially, what goes up must come down. And that may sound reasonable to you, but will is that true for any V0 we want to pick, for any, any uh, launching speed? It's going to be true for any speed that I can use with my arm. If I'm throwing something upwards, there is the object will always come back down to the Earth. But if that V0 is um, provided by a rocket, and that rocket can make the V0 be something like um, 12 kilometers a second. That's the sort of thing that many of you, if you're, if you're studying to be a, um, uh, an aero astro engineer, aeronautic engineer, mechanical engineer, you're going to, the most important sort of heavy, um, uh, most, most expensive thing you'll be doing in your careers is launching satellites. And satellites do not come back down to the Earth. So there is something wrong with this expression. H does not always um, be finite. And so there is some problem here. And the problem is that we're using the weight force is equal to minus mg, y hat, which is fine if you're going to stay near the surface of the Earth. But if you're not going to stay near the surface of the Earth, if you're going to go very far away, then the force you need to use is minus m mass of the earth g divided by r squared y hat. And this thing is not a constant. This thing is going to get smaller and smaller the farther out we get. And figuring out what this is, how this escape velocity can be calculated, is something that's much more naturally with the energy principle than with the momentum principle.